How's it going, Demon Knight here? Member of the Metal Walkerton Sioux. We're going to be talking about today the Code of Federal Regulations, Title 25 Indians, Subchapter C, Probate Process. The Department of Interior recently put on the Federal Registry, January 2nd, a phone call consultation video of a re video recorded hearing that I will be attending discussing the probate process for Native American lands. Now, we're going to be talking about land patents and Sioux land scripts right now. So I'll also be going through what I just said with this probate process. I have completed the probate process that I started in June. Actually, July, my apologies. Another project I started in June. But anyway, what's going on here today in the United States of America is that we have Native Americans walking around here not knowing their rights and thinking that if they're not enrolled with a federally recognized tribe under the 1934 Indian Reorganization Act, that there is no rights for them and that they can't prosper or benefit off of their Indian heritage. That is incorrect. I was honored enough to speak with the Lumbee Chairman of North Carolina, where members practice self-determination on their individual title of land that is absolute title ownership. Lumbee Chairman said the name of the game is owning deeds of your land. That your lineal ancestor was given to according to such treaties. Now it's different for a variety of Native Americans of the certain years, but this applies to all Native Americans, but I will be using my lineal ancestry for an example of the 1855 half-breed mixed blood Sioux of Lake Pepin. Now the probate process is actually fairly too easy for Native Americans not to go through with this and what what is the result of going through the probate process well there's two things one compensation of the land value of the certain land patent you get compensation you get paid for okay they'll pay you the land provision act congress has stated congress rather pay heirs of lineal ancestors compensation rather than having the title transferred unto them which is still and then two as i was going to get into is to live and own this title of land these lands were given in the 1800s with my grandmother margaret moran 400 acres were given to her in 1868 now this she was born in 1865 she was three years old when she got 400 acres french can uh, french canadian men made sure that their children got their new annuity payments and their land so it's it's the same for around the country there are land patents see before the united states of america was a united country for Minnesota, for instance, 1858 is when Minnesota was a state. But before then, they had to give out land patents. Now, I made a, a video of the full education and um, knowledge of what, a, uh, of what land patents were. I used the Bureau of Land Management video, combining myself into it. But... I'll be reading through a few of the probate processes because see what happens is is that you know Native Americans feel like they've been robbed. There are cash files, individual Indian money accounts with interest, money just there in the Department of Interior, in the Bureau of Land Management. Money sitting there 
that has not been claimed. Now, this has nothing to do with judgment awards. Dakota Elder Carl Leaf has been saying this for years, and other Dakota Elders, M. Denny on the Midwakanton reference site, other people, they have been stressing about these land patents, and I'm not sure if people are understanding what that truly means. I went through the probate process in July. My family and I, we were able to, you know, when I went through the process, they sent me this packet. I said, are you for real? It's this skinny. This is all I have to do to be able to claim my ancestors' land to either occupy and live on and to practice self-determination and sovereignty or to get compensation for? That's what I did. So I'll read a little bit through, you know. It says right here, preparing the probate packet. What will the BIA do with the documents I provide? What must the complete probate practice contain? What happens after the BIA uh, prepares the probate packet? Well, I'm sure you're asking, how do I, you know, go ahead and complete this probate packet? Right here it says, You know, the steps of how to do it, see, it's very, it's all just bullet points. And I mean, it says right here, the probate packet will need a death certificate of your lineal ancestor. You know, a death certificate proving, you know, that they died. And of course, you know, there this happened in the 1800s. So of course, you know, passing away, generations went by. You'll need birth certificates. Uh, proving your lineage, you know, you can go to any county courthouse and get your birth certificate, your mother's, your father's, your grandparents. You know, for instance, for me, it was Damon, Tori, Daryl, Milo, John, Grandma Margaret Moran. That was, that was the lineage. Okay. So then once you get your death certificates and birth certificates, you will list all known um, heirs. And their addresses because see why would they need your address to send a check okay and you will need to put um statements um with your intentions of what you would um want to go through you will also um need to provide any additional documentation proving your Indian uh, lineage I sent in a certificate of Indian blood which verifies my Indian descent the Department of Interior verified for me. And um, after that, it will say, um, the people who, uh, who prepares the Indian probate packet. So the probate specialist or probate clerk, they will prepare a packet with consultation with the probate heirs and beneficiaries who can be located. So on January 2nd, I'm looking forward to having this consultation meeting because see, I, I would love to help many and this is why this video is free. So I got this letter from the Department of Interior. I will read parts of it, but um, you know, it says the Office of Trust Services and Divisions of Real Estate Services, based on his uh, request, this is the department that handles um, compensation. So, in the in another part of it, it says that uh, this letter is addressing the probate hearing division of Office Hearing and Appeals. Demond Knight went through the probate process now supervisionary paralegal specialist uh christine she um sent off my probate packet to the real estate services of trust services and cash files were given now that you can also live on these titles of land see there was a lawsuit wolf child's lawsuit saying the 12 miles were given to the 1886 Medwakanton Sioux Indians of Minnesota 
the lawsuit, they wanted these people, settlers who have lived on this land for decades of years, passed down through their family. They wanted them to move off that land so Minnesota could walk in and move on it. The Land Provision Act, Congress has said they would rather pay compensation to heirs rather than transferring the title of deeds. But still, they will transfer the title of deeds. And see, this is, you know, right here, I'll read a little bit out of the Sioux Land script. It says right here that do give and grant unto said Margaret Moran and her heirs the said track of land above to have and hold the same together with all rights, privileges, uh, immunities, and um, whatsoever nature, therefore belonging unto the said Margaret Moran and her heirs assigned forever. It was reading, it's cursive, so I have to, you know, go old school for a second. So with that being said, now it says do give and grant. Now under you know, 2004, there was the an act to amend the Indian Land Consolidation Act to improve provisions relating to probate of trust and restricted land for other purposes. Now, this is a process that takes few months. The Moran family, my grandmother Angelina Moran was given land in 1861 underneath the hand, the signature of Abraham Lincoln, and this title of land is still held in the family to this day. Ray, cousin Ray Moran owns it. There's It's farmland, it's tax-free, non-government regulated, and this is what the Lumbee tribe also practices, uh, living on titles of land. You see, when uh, Indian Reorganization uh, Act, the tribes that are uh, organized underneath that, they are determined and assisted in their affairs, in their affairs by the Department of Interior, the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Now, when the title of land is given to you from your lineal ancestor, this has nothing to do with federal recognition, federal acknowledgement. This is a probate process. You can thank your lineal ancestor for it. So this is Demond Knight. If you want to collaborate or learn more or team up, I would love to learn more. If anybody, see, this is the thing is that I've learned this from, like I stated, Dakota Elder, Carl Leaf, um, other Dakota elders, Uncle Jez, Uncle Raymond, Cousin Raymond. Other tribes around the United States I've contacted. Not all tribes, you know, not all individuals of tribes are enrolled. But they still are living on their ancestors' land. It's the Monite and I'm out.